This video shows experimental results on force motion control of robot manipulators performed in the robotics laboratory at the Department of Computer and Systems Engineering of the University of Naples. Experimental setup. The laboratory setup consists of two Komao Smart 3S industrial robots. The setup allows performing experiments of single robot control as well as of coordinated control of the dual robot system. Each robot manipulator has a serial kinematic structure with six revolved joints. The axis of the outer three joints intersect two by two making an ospherical wrist. The manipulator on the right is mounted on a sliding track which provides redundancy with respect to six degree of freedom and effector tasks. The joints are actuated by brushless motors via gear trains. Motor positions are measured by shaft absolute resolvers. The native controller is the C3G9000, a VME-based system. The robots are controlled by open versions of the control architecture. Bus-to-bus -bus communication links are established with a PC Pentium at 133 MHz where control algorithms can be implemented as C modules. In order to perform experiments of force motion control on the single robot as well as on the dual robot system, an ATI-13010 force torque sensor is mounted at the tip of each robot manipulator via a suitable tool adapter. A steel bar with a terminal sphere is used as the end effector. In the following experiments, different force motion control strategies are tested for the first three joints of the manipulator on the left. Trajectory generation and control algorithms are implemented on the PC at one millisecond sampling time. Then, the reference motor currents are input to the joint drive systems. Compliance control. Compliance control derives from a position control scheme in the operational space of a PD type with gravity compensation. The end effector is made compliant with respect to contact forces by acting on the proportional gains of the controller. Notice that no force sensor is used. Initially, a stiff behavior is imposed for the end effector by setting a large proportional gain. When an external force is applied, the controller reacts in such a way as to keep the end effector in the original position. Likewise, the position tracking capabilities of the end effector are quite good as can be seen, for instance, when a circular path is commanded. On the other hand, by decreasing the proportional gain, the end effector is made to comply with an external force. When it is released, the end effector tends to return to the original position. However, the price to pay to guarantee a compliant behavior is the poor tracking capabilities of the end effector. This can be seen from the test, as well as from the recorded data showing a comparison of path tracking in the two cases of stiff 
versus compliant behavior. Impedance control. Impedance control derives from a position control scheme of inverse dynamics type. This strategy can be regarded as an enhancement of compliance control in that it allows assigning a desired dynamic behavior at the end effector in terms of stiffness, damping and mass. Now, four sensor measurements are used to achieve a linear and a couple impedance along the operational space directions. The effects of stiffness, damping and mass can be appreciated when an external force is applied at the end effector. If the force is not applied at the end effector, then the manipulator does move. For given mass and damping, it can be seen that the end effector displacement is small for large stiffness. Vice versa, the end effector displacement is large for small stiffness if the same amount of force is applied approximately in the two cases. Moreover, for given mass and stiffness, it can be seen that when the end effector is released, the overshoot is small for large damping. Vice versa, the overshoot is large for small damping. Next, different values of impedance are assigned along the operational space directions. It can be observed how the behavior of the end effector becomes anisotropic when an external force is applied. The open loop force control feature of impedance control can be tested when the end effector comes into contact with the cardboard box. The box is placed in such a way as to obstruct the commanded path. It can be recognized that full path tracking is achieved during unconstrained motion while a compliant behavior is ensured during constrained motion. This is confirmed by the recorded data the time history of the contact force clearly shows how impedance control well reacts to the unexpected presence of the environment. Force control. The main limitation of impedance control is that the contact force cannot be regulated to a desired value for a generic environment. True force control can be gained by closing an outer force feedback loop around the inner motion control system typically available for a robot manipulator. Like in the previous cases, the end effector is compliant when an external force is applied. Differently from before, however, the desired force can now be specified and in particular has been set to zero. As a consequence, it can be seen that the end effector stays still when it is released. When closed loop force control is performed, the inner motion control can be operated at either position or velocity level. In the first case, you can see the end effector motion caused by non-zero force while contact with the box is made along the vertical direction. The desired force is taken back to zero upon task completion and the end effector can be driven freely away. From the recorded data, it can be recognized that the followed path is vertical thanks to the presence of the inner position loop. Also, the contact force is regulated to the desired value thanks to the internal action present in the force controller. On the other hand, in the case of inner velocity loop, a simple proportional action suffices in theory. In practice, however, when the same task is executed, not only an end effector drift of the vertical direction occurs, but also the contact force is not perfectly regulated because of poor rejection of friction as well as of other disturbances.
parallel force position control. The key feature of parallel force position control is to provide contact force regulation along the constrained operational space directions while ensuring motion control capabilities along the unconstrained operational space directions. In order to test the performance of parallel control, an end effect of motion is commanded which involves an expected contact with the box. Initially, a zero force reference is imposed. Then, when a contact force is censored, the desired force is taken to a non-zero value and back to zero upon task completion. Since trajectory tracking is of concern, an inverse dynamics controller is used. The recorded data show that the end effect of position tracking is achieved on the box surface while the contact force is successfully regulated along the vertical direction. This is due to the presence of an integral action in the force controller which makes it dominate the position controller along the constrained direction. The same task is executed again with a computationally lighter PID parallel force position controller with gravity compensation. It can be observed that the steady state behavior is practically the same. The transient behavior instead is slightly deteriorated as concerns both position and force. Hybrid force position control. Hybrid force position control is the standard framework for controlling force along given operational space directions together with position along the complementary operational space directions. In order to visualize the way a hybrid controller works, a task is assigned which requires a zero force control in the horizontal plane together with constant position control along the vertical direction. In such a case, when an external force is applied, it is easy to see that the end effector is free to move all in the plane. An articulated task is formulated in terms of natural constraints regarding end effect of motion on the box surface together with contact force along the direction orthogonal to the box. Thanks to the use of selection matrices, only the variables subject to artificial constraints are controlled. From the recorded data, it can be recognized how the contact force is regulated to a non-zero value while maintaining a constant position. Then, a straight line motion is tracked while maintaining the previous constant force. Finally, the force is taken back to zero while maintaining the terminal position. The financial support of Progetto Finalizzato Robotica of National Research Council as well as of the Ministry of University Scientific Research and Technology is gratefully acknowledged. <laughs>